Hey, hi guys. So I've gotten a lot of requests for <laughs> people wanting to know what kind of build am I using? What kind of stats should they be using? And um, for those of you who've been on, on the channel for a while, since Dark Souls 3 actually, you'll know that I've always posted in every single one of my vid, my builds on Dark Souls 3, like all my Dark Souls 3 builds were always posted in the description. And I stopped doing that for Elden Ring. And the reason for it is that uh, I want to give you guys good tips. I want to give you guys proper advice. I want you guys to have um, good information. And my information in Dark Souls 3 or all my knowledge in Dark Souls 3 was top of the line. So I was 110% confident in everything I was um, suggesting. But here in Elden Ring, the game is still only a bit over a month old, like almost two months old maybe. And I wouldn't say I am that confident in my stats or my character spread and stuff like that. So I always prefer to encourage people to try something new, to try whatever they want, experiment. And I think we're still in this stage. I think we're still in the stage of experimentation, trying different things. And I would highly encourage you guys to try different things as well. But with that being said, I am changing my stats here and there uh, every so often and I'm trying different stat spread. But for those of you who actually want uh, a good stat, stat spread for a strength build, well, I can still give you a, um, you know, a, a template to start with. So any melee build, uh, you want to have 60 vigor. There's no question about that. Uh, I've never really invested to, into mind so far. Because uh, I think you already have plenty. If you're a Bloodhound Step Spammer, you'll want to crank that up to 99. Just so that you can completely get the skill out of the game. Oh, maybe reduce Vigor here. So if you're a Bloodhound Step user, you might want to have a character that's more like this. But uh, if you're a normal person, I would say Minimum Mind is, is you know, it's perfectly fine for a melee character. Endurance will keep that for last. Also, let's put that back to 60. And then for the strength, honestly, um, I've played around a little bit with uh, with the strength stat. And in this game, you definitely want, I believe, 54. I think 54 is the most advantageous. It's the most... Uh, it's the, the break point where you get the most bang for your buck. With that said, you can go higher. You can definitely go higher than... Uh, you can even go all the way to 80, really. You know, but I wouldn't go past 80. But with that said, I think I think 54 is plenty for a strength build. So I'd suggest you guys to at least have 60 vigor, at least have 54 strength. And for dexterity, I would say go for the minimum requirement of the weapon you want to use. So for instance, I like using Great Lance on my strength build. So minimum requirement would be 14 dexterity. But since I do use other weapons, my build is not just focused on a single weapon. I like to use, say, for instance, the Stitcher, the Godskin Stitcher, I believe it's called. So that has a minimum requirement of 17. And so because of that, uh, my build will end up with 17 decks if I want to use it. But it's not necessarily optimized for Lance if I was only to make a strength build that only uses Lance. I would go for 14, right? And... Same thing for Fate. I like to have 12 Fate, but it's to get access to buffs that I never really use. And even items that I don't really use. So, I mean, if you don't use them either, just keep it to the minimum. You don't need 12 Fate. It's just that I like to have some options whenever I need it. So I got it at 12, but really, realistically, like a good strength build would look more like this, right? And then you go into Endurance. I use Endurance as a stat dump because honestly, like, you can't really go above 60 here. Look at the uh, the return for your point. You go from 1887 to to, uh, to 1900, right? And then after that, you only get 6 points. So the return after 60 Vigor is not worth it. Um, here, your Endurance... you. I mean, the, the logical thing to do here is either you dump it into mind, either you dump it into endurance, or you'd go for the minimum endurance you would need to carry whatever weapon you're using, and then you dump the rest of your stat and your offensive stat, right? So depending on what you're using and depending on 
what kind of weapon or what kind of diversity of weapon you want your build to have you would either go with a little bit more endurance a little bit more offensive strength or offensive stat or you could go more into mind if you want to have uh, i don't know access to be able to do more ash of war before uh, drinking a blue flask for me 10 is plenty though so it's up to you guys but for me personally my strength build this this is my stat spread on my strength build right now it is subject to change this is my stat spread uh the thing you see here with 50 decks is uh, uh i'm experimenting with a dex build at the moment so that's that but uh yeah, this is my stat spread here for strength build right now. It will change, it keeps changing. And uh, for my suggestion, I would say you go for the minimum requirement for your decks. You go for the minimum requirement for all other stats. And then you dump the rest either in endurance, either you get a bit of mind, or you dump it straight for more offense, right? So these are all good options. It's up to you guys. You do what you like. So as far as the ring goes, um, it's always up to, I'd say it's always up to the weapon you're using. So for instance, here, if I'm using, um, if I'm using the lance, for instance, go back here, go back here. Cause we can't two hand our weapon here. And speaking of two handing, surprisingly enough, uh, strength, strength builds, do, uh, do more damage with nearly every single weapon in the game when you two-hand them so a heavy a heavy rapier two-handed will do more damage than a a keen rapier two-handed on a dex build even though technically it's like rapiers have always been dex weapons so there's this weird thing going on where strength builds are much better when you two-hand your weapons and it's pretty true for almost every single class in the game. Actually, I don't even know if there's a class that's an exception. Maybe, but uh, I mean, I don't really care to know right now. But I've checked with katanas and rapiers, which are both usually dex weapons. And strength, strength builds actually do more damage with both uh, rapiers and, uh, and katanas. So it's, it's kind of weird, but yeah, it is how it is. And so dex builds are better when you one hand your weapon. So when you have weapons one handed, dex build will almost always be better than strength builds. So weird little rule of thumb there. Strength builds are better for builds where you two hand your weapon and dex builds are better for builds where you one hand your weapon. There are exceptions to that. Like for instance, uh, Lance um, maybe is slightly better uh, on strength build because some weapons are just completely strength. Like Lance does more damage on a strength build than a dex build, even one-handed. So that's an exception. But going back to uh, showing the build here, the rings I like to use, uh, there's really only one ring that I would say you need across the board on any build you're using, and that's the Crimson Ember Medallion. And Crimson Ember Medallion gives you a good chunk of HP if we look here. Um, it gives you a good 152 HP, right? And uh, I know a lot of people from previous Souls games really are hung up on the Ring of Favor, which is the Earth Tree Ring Favor here in Elden Ring. But uh, it's not necessarily as good as in previous games. So consider this. It doesn't really give you that much, um, the Earth Tree Ring. It's like worth, I would say, about... Let's see here. Here you go from uh, 2052 to... 2134 so i think that's what um 70 wait okay yeah 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 so that's about 82 or is it yeah i think that's about 82 so you get about 82 hp from uh like picking Earth Tree Favor Ring. So Earth Tree Favor is not really worth many stamina points or equip load either. It's worth something. So if your build depends on it, it's not a bad idea to go for it. But uh, like I will be uh, explaining to you here in a second, there are better options uh, when it comes to the Earth Tree of Favor. So it's not a mandatory ring anymore. You can skip it. You don't need it for, uh, for all melee builds anymore. It's not like it's used to be. So 
I do use it though. I do use it because I need the weight requirement for to rock my fashion and two lances. So when that happens or when I have that set particular setup, I need that uh, Earth Tree Ring of Favor plus two for the weight. But uh, for those of you guys, maybe your build is going to be slightly different with slightly different fashion. So yeah, maybe you won't need it. As far as the ring goes. Uh, a good starting ring is Ritual Shield Talisman and Ritual Sword Talisman. Of course, those are... Um, this gives you a bit more defense when you're full HP, and this gives you a bit more offense. Those are not always good. I'd say they're only worth using when you have some sort of regen going. So when you have your physics active, for instance, with regen, I'd say they're, they're worth using because uh, the HP regen you get will make it so that you will... More, more often than not be on your shield or sword talisman for or the first hit and maybe the second hit once you switch to um, to the uh, Sun Princess ring which is called the blessed do talisman here but either way I wouldn't say I would say it's not worth it if you're not on uh, on some sort of region because they're too easy to get off like unlike other games um, here are a simple fan dagger will completely get you off these rings which is very very easy to land and it's pretty much free so they're not always worth using only when you have some sort of regen going so wh what other ring would i suggest if i think these three rings which used to be like the usual uh, suspect and the usual ring everyone were using in previous games what would i suggest well the moment you're fighting something that has bleed an opponent that uses bleed this is a must. It greatly ri uh, raises robustness. You want to have the um, the stalwart horn charm plus one. This is a must for PvP. If you're fighting rivers of blood, if you're fighting anything that has bleed, you want to have that. Look at that bar. Look at the size of the bar. It's so much bigger than if you don't have it. Actually, I can't really showcase it if I don't have it. But yeah, it, it's definitely worth it. Uh, your bleed bar gets a lot bigger. There are other ways you can increase the size of your bleed bar. Look at that. Uh, there's some items like this shield, for instance, raises your robustness as well. So you can stack you can stack those if you really want more bleed resist. But yeah, the moment you're fighting rivers of blood or anything that has bleed, this this talisman is definitely a must. I say ring talisman, it's the same thing. So yeah, that's that's a must if you're fighting something with bleed. If you're using a weapon like Lance, uh, it's definitely going to be a must to have the spear the spear talisman. A uh, spear talisman gives you more damage on counter hits. Um, same thing with the claw talisman. Claw talisman gives you I think 10% more damage on jumping attacks. And uh, when you're using something like Lance, you're going to be doing a lot of jumping attacks. And so same thing if you're playing with something like a Stitcher. Uh, Stitcher pretty much its best attack is the jumping attack so depending on the weapon you're using you're gonna want to have these rings these rings are I would say fairly popular for any build that has poke attacks and that also stacks with Royal Knight Resolve so that's even more of a reason to use them if you're using Royal Knight Resolve on your main weapon so that's another thing Okay, so but if you're not using any of that, maybe you're using uh, maybe you're using a different setup. Like if you're using a halberd and a say uh, an S dock or a clean rot sword. I mean, it's still poke weapons, still good, but you're not going to be doing jump attack with this. A shard of Alexander is worth it as well. Shard of Alexander increases your Ash of War damage. So if you're using something like Fr Flame Strike. Flame strikes, it's fairly easy to land, like you're most likely going to land it at least once, maybe twice in a fight. And so getting that extra bit of damage is going to be worth it too, so Shard of Alexander is a good option as well. If you plan on parrying, Dagger Talisman is going to be your bet. So if you want to do some parries, uh, I would highly suggest, um, you know, the Dagger Talisman. If you're if you're not comfortable with swapping, have a Misericord Dagger on your second slot and just soft swap to it so you parry someone soft swap to it and get the repost if you're comfortable with swapping uh you know if you're comfortable with swapping after you get the parry you switch the swap to the dagger it's the same principle uh but why the misericord dagger it's pretty much a one shot it has the highest crit with 140 
and with the dagger talisman you're pretty much guaranteed to get a one shot i mean unless it's a fire dagger and you're on water now it's not always a one shot but it might actually be if my misericord was fully upgraded anyway though if you're if you have it um if you if you repuff someone when it's not raining or you're not in water even fire is gonna one shot with the dagger talisman so <clears throat> granted you have your uh, dagger upgraded okay so what else is good for rings um Honestly, it's never a bad idea to go for a defense ring against something specific. So when you're fighting a mage, <clears throat> if you don't need the Spirit Talisman, if you don't need the Claw Talisman, a, a good choice is to go for something like Spell Drake. If you're fighting a mage, that's never a bad idea. Um, Bull Goat, not a bad idea either. It depends on your build. Usually you want to reach your either 60 Poise Breakpoint or 61. Uh, I would say that's probably the most popular breakpoint. You don't always need to reach that. Uh, or you can go higher. You can go like beyond. But uh, poise discussion is going to be for another day. All of this is subject to change in f next few patches and whatnot. So uh, we'll go to more detail once the game is a bit more settled. So other rings that I suggest. As soon as you're low HP, there is absolutely no question that the red and blue feathered branch sword, which are red and blue tear stone, there is no question that these rings are absolutely a must. So you always want to use uh, these two rings when you're low HP. It's a must. It makes you, it gives you sort of a chance at uh, fighting back at low HP because that, especially that blue feathered branch sword. Uh, it has some pretty crazy defense once you're low HP, so definitely worth it. So also it stacks with the uh, Twin Bird Kite Shield. Twin Bird Kite Shield kind of gives a little bit of uh, uh, extra defense and extra offense when you're low HP, so it's not a bad idea to pull out that shield on late game fight, or late game fight on uh, uh, once you're low HP. So what else is there uh ring wise yeah defense ring not a bad idea usually what i like to do when i'm fighting if i start with this ring setup usually my ring setup will end up like this at the end of a fight right so this will this will this is what my late dual ring setup will look like during a fight whereas um this is what my starting a dueling ring setup would look like and maybe even sometimes I would start right away with these if I'm using say double lens right and if I had double lens well since I am required to have the earth tree favor for the weight my end game would still look like this so this is what the the end game ring setup would look like I say for a duel, but that's also you can also apply that to invasions. Although in invasions, usually you don't want to get to that blue feathered branch sword range. You always want to keep your HP higher. So those are mostly used for duels. But you never know in invasion if you get drained out of uh, Estus and whatnot, you could make use of them. You can do some good damage with them too. So invasion also concealing veil never a bad idea. For those of you who don't know, concealing veil makes you invisible at a certain distance so when you start to get further away from your opponent concealing veil is very useful uh to sneak by enemies or sneak by uh opponents um only works when you're crouching so keep that in mind uh great jar arsenal not bad if um if you're, you're the type of guy that has a uh a full bull goat set <laughs> You're the type of person that rocks you know full full armor right? or that wants max poise for instance you're most likely going to be looking at a setup that looks like this uh like that right so if if you're looking for that max poise usually you'll need that earth tree plus the great jar arsenal and the only ring you're going to be switching is going to be that crimson medallion Although, to be fair, um, HP regen might not be as good as, you know, an another one of these damaging rings, depending on what you're using. So, if, for instance, I was at 133 poise here, um, it would be better 
to switch to the Spear Talisman and just keep that ring set up like that for the fight. And then once I get low HP, it would be Blue Feathered Branch Sword. So you see how the rings or talisman change depending on the build you're using and the, uh, like when or what's going on in the fight. Like are you low HP? Uh, are you starting the game? Starting a match, whatnot. So that all matters. And then there's other rings for different situations, but I won't go through all of them. This is more like a, a strong base for, for you guys. Um, if you're fighting, you know, madness or sleep, definitely use the focus ring, just like I told you to use the stalwart horn uh, charm. So same thing for this. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. So for all of you who ask about my build, well, here you go. I gave you a treat. <laughs> this is how I... I go about making my builds right now in general. So I take into consideration the weapon I'm using. Uh, I take into consideration the breakpoint I need to hit. Most of the time, or actually all the time, for now I try to hit 60 or 61 poise. Uh, what that allows you to do is to tank, um, you know, dual Naginata uh, running L1. Or, I mean, any small weapons like Curve Sword, for instance, you'd be able to tank uh, an L1 from small weapons. So that's usually the breakpoint I try to hit. But you can go higher or you can even go lower if you're not too worried about that. I mean, you can go lower. If you're the type of guy who uses a shield, you definitely do not need... You definitely do not need that much poise because you're going to be poking behind the shield anyway. So you're most likely not going to, you know, take that much damage. You're most likely going to be looking for... A poise breakpoint that's lower, but it depends on your build. Maybe you can optimize for more defense, and with more defense, you usually comes with more poise. So, either way, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I'll catch you guys up next time. Take care.